Gentlemen, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Steve? Uh, I am doing excellent. Uh, first of all, congrats on this movie. Uh, you guys are what we call uh, talented actors. <laughs> I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it like that. So uh, I like asking a curveball to start things off for all three of you. If you could get the financing to make anything that you want, what would you make and why? Oof. Jesus. Uh, you know, honestly, it was this movie, to be honest. This was the dream. It was the passion project. And we did it at, a, at the budget that we could do it and not have to compromise and make the movie that we wanted to. So I... You know, I can't think off the top of my head something else like that, you know, maybe someday. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I feel like we did it. I think I think people, they say, well, did you have a good time? And I think that people this was difficult. This was truly a difficult piece. And I always tell people with a lot of the things that I play, just speaking for myself, never mistake difficulty with not having a good time. This was tough, but when you come out of this, it, it's so much more rewarding. I've had a good time on pieces that I can't stand to watch. Mm. You know what I mean? This was brutal in its, in its making on a day-to-day -day basis, but we had an incredible, incredible time on this piece. I wouldn't trade. It, yeah, if I had, you know, you give me the money, this is it right here. Anything you want to add, John? I'm, I'm with them. You know, look, I, I look, man, it's, you know, people throw that term out, you know, passion projects. And, you, you know, John and I met over 10 years ago, you know, at a play reading of this play. You know, we, we uh, you know, I, I we did this play in a 40 seat theater at 1030 at night every night. And, and it was, uh, you know, at that point was the, the singular most satisfying artistic experience of my life. Um, and, and it brought me one of my best friends and, and, and my primary sort of artistic, you know, partner and collaborator and the guy I bounce everything off of. And, and um, you know, we've been talking about this forever and, um, you know, we finally did it. And then to bring in Shay, it was just, you know, it's one sort of glorious thing after another. And, uh, you know, so look, I, you know, I think we're all really proud uh, of the film. I think, I think the challenges of, of what made this a really, really special and dangerous and thought provoking and, and, and complicated play. I think we're able to, uh, to achieve uh, the same, if not more as the film. So uh, yeah, I, I, I think doing stuff you believe in with people that you believe in as well, that's, 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 that's the idea. Uh, I'm gonna use John P to, so I don't have to keep on, you know. Um, sure, good. So I'm, I'm from New England and I saw a lot of stuff in this movie that I'm very familiar with, whether it be the people on display, the, the uh, just there's so much that I saw, but my big objection to the film is how could you not have someone drinking Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, you know, man, uh, I'm joking, so by the way, I'm joking, no, no, by no, the way, I, I, I hear you. You know, I've I've written other plays. I, one of the opening lines in, in the sort of play I wrote after Small Under Repair called Lost Girls, which is sort of the female thematic companion piece to the play they mentioned donkeys left and right, the way my family does at home. Uh, you know, I just felt like with the movie, I really wanted to avoid as many of those sort of cliches. And then there's licensing issues, obviously. I mean, <laughs> you know, we couldn't get licensing to have, every the reality is you go to New England, everybody's wearing some sort of Red Sox, Celtics, you know, thing. It's like the clothing brand. We just, you know, a small film like that, you just don't have licensing. So uh, I just never went that way. I apologize. I want to make sure I say her name right. Uh, is it Ciara? Yeah. Okay. So um, when when I heard Ciara's accent, I was like, "Oh wow, this is the real deal." When she delivered that accent on set, were all three of you like, "Shit, I'm gonna have to step up my game." <laughs> yeah. From the yeah, set, look, we, we kind of she came into our our, our universe. Uh, you know, we knew she was something. I mean, she's just an enormously special, talented, and strong you know, artist. And, and, and she came in and she had this ability to be both so powerful and so fragile at the same time. And, and, and you totally believe that she was raised by the, she had like an element of each of these men. And she, she, mm -hmm. she also, you could see that she sort of surpassed each of them as well in her own kind of uh, evolution. Um, she's someone that, um, 
you, you, you absolutely believe that all three of these guys just revere and, and would do anything to protect and um, hold on this pedestal. And uh, mm. she's incredible. She's really incredible. Oh, yeah. hundred percent for all three of you guys. Um, I love learning about like the behind the scenes of the making of a movie, things that you might not know. Um, can you share maybe things that might surprise people to learn about the making of this film? Um, they might be surprised at how goddamn cold it was through like half of the scenes that, you know, you're just out there shooting again and again. And it was like two degrees out on some of those things. Uh, and what I didn't realize was how that how when it's that cold, how it affects the sort of texture of the of the of the image, which was great. It has that, you know, New England cold, you know, harsh quality that really translated really well uh we didn't necessarily plan that but that was all uh that all was captured i think there's there's a ton of heart in this piece man uh you know in its history and in, in the way we shot it you know um you know when we when we did this as a play my, my dog boss i think you've met yes. he was uh you know he was he was backstage at every single rehearsal every single performance he also was the old dog uh, you, you know, in, 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 he was Frank's dog in the, in the movie. And then my youngest dog, Bam Bam was, was that dog in flashbacks, you know, all of our kids, you know, participated in this movie, everybody who has uh, played the role, these roles in other productions, they came in to do smaller parts. Um, it was a real labor of love, you know, a ton of heart, the kind of heart that's, that, that that's kind of undeniable. And I think it comes through. That's a way better answer. Go with that one. Though. Yeah. That's the answer. It was cold, though. <laughs> it was cold. It was cold. I don't know, man. I, you know. Uh, Jay, do you want to add anything? No, no. I, I, I agree, you know, agree with both of those. Uh, yeah. uh, this is one of those films where it's kind of hard to talk about everything because there's a lot that happens. And I'm sort of curious, when you've been telling, like, friends who may not, might not know the play or might not know the movie, how have you been describing the film to people, if you don't mind? I, you know, we've said we've said before, you, you know, the, the film doesn't fall into any one genre. And I think that's what makes it so unique and special. You know, it's 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 as funny, you know, it's this funny buddy comedy, but then it gets really, really dangerous. And then um, there's all these kinds of twists and turns. And in, in, in one second, you're in this kind of movie, the other second you're in this. But what's uniform all the way through is the reality and the, 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 the palpability and the believability of the relationships. Because it's so funny and the humor is so focused on these guys really having a history with each other. You know, when we did the play, you, 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 it was so dangerous in that room. It was so electric. You never knew what was going to happen next. And that's really what we went for in the movie. You know, like a Tarantino movie, all of a sudden you, 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 you're in something totally different, but, but, but you believe that, that, that you're there. I think that this is the kind of movie that um, you're gonna you're gonna laugh your ass off, and and there's probably a really good shot that you're gonna cry, and there's definitely a shot that you're gonna be provoked, and you might even be offended. And I think we welcome all of that. And uh, I think it's it's just not the this is ne this is not the kind of film that you're gonna go to and say, uh, you know, it, it, it just it will affect you. And knowing that that's that's the kind of art that we want to make, you know. And 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 I think we're really proud of that. I agree with everything you just said. Um... Uh, John P., I'm curious if you could talk a little bit. I love talking about editing because that's the final rewrite. It's where it all comes together. Can you sort of talk about what you learned in the editing room that maybe you weren't expecting and any sort of tweaks that happened to make sure that the audience wasn't sort of ahead of where the story was going? You know, that's a great question. The edit was an incredible uh, experience. And, it, and and we had two different editors on and it, we, we went through a whole process with that. I mean, we, you know, a movie at this budget, you can't do multiple test screenings. So some of that stuff was, uh, you kind of had to go with your gut. But the movie lays out certain plot elements more so than the play. So the play is like you're a captive audience and people lean in and they listen. And in a film, you know, we had to visually telegraph it the bread there's a lot more breadcrumbs in the movie um and you know you you shoot a number of things I, what i was most impressed by with the editing was how look on the i asked a lot of directors before and i was like how do you know when you done when you're done with the take and you move on and they're like you kind of just go with your gut but they're like nine times out of ten the take you think is the take you're going to use doesn't doesn't end up being the one and what i was so 
enjoyed about the editing process was like these sort of gifts that when you work with actors like this, these gifts they give in different versions, like seeing Shay on the day, it felt really good. We moved on, but then you're in the edit and you're like, oh my God, he gave us all these different avenues. And the same with John, his performance was so great. You never had to cut around a performance. You always had options in, in the way they were listening and pivoting on each other. So really it took on a life of its own because because to your point, Stephen is like, there's the, you know, there's the movie you write, the movie you shoot, and then the movie you edit. And it definitely evolved. And what happened was, is the performances and the characters took over the edit of the movie and informed the truth of every, of the story in ways that the script was, uh, you know, the, the performances were so effective in, in many ways, you didn't need a lot of the stuff that was in the script. I, I completely get it. Listen, all three of you guys, congrats on the movie. You, you, you did such a great job. Um, and uh, thank you for talking with me and have a great day. Nice to see you.